I'm Marty Stauffer. The most widely distributed mammal in North America is the muskrat. This medium-sized rodent lives anywhere it can find plant food and still water. A diligent worker, it's always swimming, digging, or eating. Beady-eyed in all business, it can be quarrelsome. The muskrat reminds me of a grouchy old man but it's very well dressed. Its waterproof suit of dense glistening fur makes it North America's most valuable fur bearer. Let's pay a visit to Old Man Muskrat. In wetlands from Louisiana to Alaska, dome-shaped muskrat houses dot the landscape. In winter, the tops of these structures are the only evidence that life exists beneath the frozen marsh. Our story begins with the return of spring, as we take a rare glimpse into the private world of muskrats. Muskrats are adapted to life in the water in much the same way as beavers. Often muskrats are mistaken for beavers. One way to tell them apart is by the materials they use to build their nests. Beavers build their lodges using logs, branches, and mud. Muskrats prefer to use aquatic plants, such as cattails and bulrush. Inside their house, a hollow nesting chamber is accessible only by an underwater entrance. Much of the springtime is spent piling up vegetation to repair their winter quarters or to build a new house. The dense cattail stands of Minnesota provide an ideal habitat for these semi-aquatic mammals. And a perfect backdrop for cinematographer Steve Crushell to observe and film muskrat behavior. This muskrat is more interested in collecting nesting material than in posing for Steve. And what better to build with than some camouflage netting?
With a splash, the muskrat disappears, only to resurface in the hidden sanctuary of its house. This ability to vanish at the slightest hint of trouble has no doubt led to the success of its kind. In fact, the muskrat is so successful at surviving that it often becomes its own worst enemy. Population explosions, called eatouts, are a regular occurrence in a muskrat marsh. This pond on an Ohio farm supports a large number of muskrats. The close proximity of houses belies the muskrat's antisocial nature. But their social behavior does vary greatly, depending on how well fed they are. The more food to go around, the more goodwill is displayed toward one another. Their diet includes the roots and stems of cattails, bulrushes, and other aquatic plants, as well as clams, snails, crayfish, frogs, and carrion. Coots also find this pond an inviting habitat. While the female coot tends to her offspring, the male gathers cattail stalks to enlarge their nesting platform. Inside the muskrat's dry, grass-lined nest, a litter of newborns await their next meal of rich milk. Northern muskrats usually raise two large litters a year, while those in the south may have three or more smaller litters. Muskrats are not exactly model parents. Many babies are abandoned by their mother, while still others are preyed upon by their father. Mass reproduction, rather than parental care, is the rule. Sharing the same preference for nesting materials, the coot takes advantage of this ready-made supply. Muskrats indirectly benefit waterfowl in another way. By cutting down vegetation, they open up areas in marshes that would otherwise be too dense for birds such as ducks to feed and nest. A muskrat's childhood is both fleeting and dangerous. They open their eyes at two weeks. By one month, they're completely weaned. This litter has another week to go before they're driven away from the nest by their mother.
As with any wild baby, exploration is a vital part of growing up. A painted turtle basking at the water's edge proves irresistible to this youngster's curiosity. If this had been a large snapping turtle, the inexperienced muskrat would have made an easy meal. Turtles, hawks, snakes, and mink certainly take their toll, but one of the greatest threats is flooding. High water can drown an entire litter. Another unwary sibling leaves the nest to inspect its odd neighbor. The turtle responds to this intrusion in the usual way by retreating into its mobile home. The lush wetlands of New Hampshire support a wide variety of creatures, including the majestic moose. A nearby muskrat grooms to keep its summer coat in top condition. <laughs> Despite its long list of predators, the muskrat shows little fear of other animals. Apparently nothing stands in its way, not even a moose. Another member of this aquatic community is the mink. These skillful hunters are the muskrat's number one predator. If trapped inside the nest, young or inexperienced muskrats are easy prey for the mink. full-grown muskrat outside the nest is another matter. Not only is the muskrat a superior swimmer, but it's a scrappy fighter as well. When swimming underwater, muskrats will occasionally stop and freeze among the aquatic plants, a behavior most likely intended to confuse attackers. The calls of migrating geese proclaim a change of seasons. The animals that live here instinctively know 
that the bounty of this lake, the insects, crustaceans, and clams, will soon be locked in ice. While many animals will have to search for food elsewhere, the muskrat will remain and make its living beneath the ice. A raccoon foraging in the shallow water attracts the attention of a curious muskrat. Muskrat is not a congenial creature, and it often pesters other animals that wander into its territory. By late fall, marshes are usually overrun with muskrats, and many of these animals migrate up to 20 miles to seek out new habitat. On land, a muskrat is much more vulnerable, so its disposition is particularly unfriendly. While a moose poses little threat, any animal is considered a potential enemy by these edgy rodents. A sharp set of teeth is certainly a good weapon to have, but it's of little protection against a freezing storm. Exposed to the elements and to predators, few muskrats survive these migrations. Yet the pioneering muskrat continues its trek through marsh and meadow, looking for unoccupied territory with plenty of food and water. These migratory habits are probably responsible for their broad distribution on this continent and more recently in Europe. Muskrats are found in every state except Florida. A group of curious cows go for a closer look. Despite its name and long scaly tail, the muskrat is not a rat. It's more closely related to a field mouse. But it definitely reeks of musk, an odor produced by scent glands for marking trails and attracting mates.
While migrating, hordes of muskrats, less fortunate than this one, are killed on highways. In the distance, a winding river marks the journey's end for the weary traveler. But the dangers are far from over. Setting up home along a stream bank requires a different type of nest construction. Since piled up vegetation would wash away, muskrats dig underwater dens into the bank with interior chambers situated above the high water line. By December, this once thriving environment has become inhospitable. But muskrats are one of the few creatures that are well equipped for it. Under the ice, they can hold their breath for up to 20 minutes. And they're protected from hypothermia by their thick waterproof fur, an asset for which some individuals pay a high price. The muskrat winter coat with its soft under fur and long glossy guard hairs is highly sought after by trappers. Disturbed by the noise outside its house, the occupant swims away, but it will return after the trapper leaves. Muskrat pelt is actually less valuable than those of the other major fur bearers. However, the commercial demand for these pelts, per volume, is the greatest of any species. An annual muskrat fur crop of about 10 million skins is valued at $35 million. This trapper uses a conibear trap to catch muskrats inside their house. In recent years, conibears have replaced the steel leg hold trap, at least for muskrat trapping. Designed to kill an animal quickly, these traps are considered much more humane. The next morning, the trapper returns to collect his catch.
Muskrats are trapped not only for their fur, but also as food. Their meat is often marketed under the names marsh hare or Chesapeake terrapin. Probably because muskrat sounds unenticing, furriers have also used a variety of names to sell its fur. Names such as Red River Seal, Hudson Seal, and even River Mink. Back at his house, the trapper prepares the skins for market. Beaver pelts are nailed into a circle on a flat board, while muskrat pelts are stretched on a wire frame. This prolific little mammal triumphs despite the demands of the fashion world and the dangers of life in the wild. Trappers take 10 million a year, but the muskrat continues to flourish. While nature creates balance on one front, man invades on another. Our wetlands are often thought of as wastelands, better drained and filled. Fortunately, we're beginning to realize that the wetlands are one of our most productive habitats, haven for a wealth of wildlife, including the grumpy but intriguing old man muskrat. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.